Bon Voyage Travel Agency. Jason Randolph speaking. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Of course it's permissible to wear Bermuda length shorts in Bermuda, Mrs. Diefenbaker. Bright coral. Oh, yes. Yes, perfectly lovely. Garish? <laughs> no. No, not, not in Bermuda, Mrs. Diefenbaker. And you'll be quite uh, in the swim, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not at all. Bon voyage. Um, excuse me, Mr. Randolph. Oh, yes? Perhaps you remember me, Miss Prime? Oh, yes, yes. And Susan Prime. Yes, 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 I, I, of, co of course. Uh, you took the round-the-world trip. Uh, have a good time, Miss Prime. Oh, yes, yes, it was wonderful in many respects. It must have been. Uh, a trip around the world is certainly wonderful. Oh, yes, it is, yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, well, uh, so now you're back. Mm-hmm. The ship docked this morning, and I came right on over here after registering at my hotel. Oh? Uh, can I do something for you, Miss Prime? Well, I have a problem, Mr. Randolph, or rather, I guess Bombayas Travel has a problem. Uh, what sort of problem, Miss Prime? Oh, I'm afraid it's a trifle involved. You see... I didn't mind so much not finding romance. I mean, romance. Well, I never expected Bon Voyage Travel to guarantee anything like that. It's in one of your folders. It says, I remember it almost word for word. It says, romance awaits the adventurous on a world tour, and who knows where one will find it. Yes. Will it be on a star-strewn night underneath the Southern Cross, in a rickshaw in Hong Kong, on yes. camelback to the pyramids? Who knows? Well, yes. <laughs> Who does know, really? Uh, yes, well, I didn't find it, but that's all right. It's the lost day that bothers me. And the lost day? Sunday, June 17th. I lost it when the ship crossed the international date line. <laughs> I don't think I quite understand. I've thought about it very carefully, and I know I'm right. May I explain? Please do. I went to bed in my cabin late on Saturday night. Close to midnight, in fact. Yes. When I woke up the next morning, I expected it was Sunday. Wouldn't you? Why, uh, I should think so. Yes. Well, it wasn't Sunday. It was Monday. Was it? I first noticed it at breakfast. It said Monday on the menu. I thought a mistake had been made, but the steward said no, there hadn't been. Mm -hmm. He said we had crossed the international date line during the night, and so we left Sunday. Did you? Well, I confess I... Don't know much about the workings of it, but I do know that you, uh, yes, you, you do lose a day traveling from east to west. Uh, and you took the package tour, didn't you? Yes. Yes, well, then you were traveling east to west. The package tour always travels east to west. Well, now, uh, what about the lost day? I feel I'm entitled to a refund. A refund? I paid for that day and didn't get it. <laughs> You're not serious. Oh, no. I mean, everyone loses that day aboard ship. There's nothing we here at Bon Voyage Travel can do about the international date line. Well, then you shouldn't imply in your advertising that you can. Well, Miss Prine, I don't believe we do. There's nothing that I know of in our round-the-world brochure that says anything about the international date line. Exactly. You don't say anything about it, and you should. Well, now... I... You advertise a 90-day round-the-world tour, but it's really only 89 days. Well, perhaps it is, it but... It definitely is. Yes. Well, I... I don't see what we can do about it, Miss Bryant. You can refund my money for that one day. I figured it out. It comes to $25. Twenty... The entire trip came to $2,250, including tax. It took me many years to save it, Mr. Randolph. Yes, I'm a sure. A teacher's salary isn't very large, you know. Oh, yes, I do know. It's a shame what teachers are paid. Of course, it's not so bad for unmarried teachers without children. No, I suppose. Like me. But married teachers, especially with children, they do have a difficult time. Yes, I have a friend who's a teacher. I know he has trouble making both ends meet. Yes, well... Well, I don't see how we can refund the money, Miss Bryan. I really don't see that. But you admit I did lose the day. No, no, now, don't say that. If you'll forgive my saying so, Miss Bryan, I think you're just a bit confused. But I'm I not... mean, you didn't actually...
actually lose a day, uh, not out of your life, I mean. I mean, it isn't as if you stopped living for one whole day. But I didn't live it either. That day just didn't exist. I went to bed on Saturday night, and when I woke up, it was Monday morning. What happened to Sunday? <laughs> well, offhand, I, I... I couldn't say. I... I don't know. I don't either. But I do know I lost that day, and I'm afraid I must stand on my rights and demand a refund. A refund? That or summon you to court. What? Well, by our travel agency, that is, not you. Oh, and you're being very unreasonable, Miss Prime, uh, to ask for a refund of $25 because you supposedly lost the I day. I didn't supposedly lose it. I lost it. And it meant a lot to me. Well, now, I'm sure You that... don't know how I dreamed about that trip. And planned for it. Yes. And saved for it. Ninety days aboard an ocean liner, each minute of each day filled with all the wonderful things i thought about and dreamed about for nearly ten years. Yes. And yes. to find that one of those days was gone, lost forever. But it wasn't well, it, lost. Well, then what happened to it? Time. Time, Miss Prime, is an abstract thing. There was nothing abstract about the other 89 days. No, no, but what I mean to say... Uh, the day you think you lost, well, it never did exist. <laughs> Not actually. It exists in my diary. There is a completely blank day in my diary. Here, I have it with me in my handbag, and I can no, show No, no, please, please don't bother, Miss Prime. Uh, let me try to explain so you can understand. Now, if you are suggesting that I am stupid, Mr. Randolph... Oh, Rando, no, nothing then of the I sort, think... nothing... But, uh, listen to me now, please, Miss Prime. The international date line is simply an imaginary line drawn along the 180th meridian... I am a teacher, of... you know. Yes, yes, I do. And at the crossing of which, you change the name and date of the day. Forward if going west, backward if going east. I am fully aware of all that. I'm sure Since you are. Since I, I was sailing west, what should have been Sunday was changed to Monday. Exactly. Still, Monday was Sunday. It had a different name and date, yes, but, uh, well, you understand. All I understand is that I lost a day. I don't want to argue the point with you. I don't want to argue either. I wanted to be reasonable. I really wanted to be fair. I grant you have no control over the international date line, but you do have control over what you put in your travel folder. My dear madam. Now, don't you, my dear madam, me. You sold me 90 days of travel aboard an ocean liner, and you delivered only 89. But that is... I was perfectly willing to settle for a refund, but I find your attitude decidedly aggravating. Decided. So you can just forget the refund, Mr. Randolph. Uh, Instead, you can give me what you contracted to give me in the first place. What do you mean? You can give me a full day at sea aboard the ship I sailed on. Do you realize what you're asking? Not asking, Mr. Randolph. Demanding. A full day aboard the ship you sailed on? That is what the contract calls for and what I must demand that you deliver. Either that or I shall sue Bon Voyage Travel Agency. And what is more, Mr. Randolph... I shall win. Who am I, Mr. Randolph? Why, you're president of the Bon Voyage Travel Agency, Mr. Morley. President and owner, Mr. Randolph. President and owner. But do I ever travel? No. Everyone else travels, but I do not travel. In ten years, I haven't even taken a ferry trip to the Statue of Liberty. Do you know what I'm going to do someday, Mr. Randolph? No, sir, Mr. Morley. I am going to get up from this desk. I'm going to that closet. I'm going to open that closet and take out my hat and coat. I'm going to put them on. And then I am going to walk out of here, and I am not coming back for a long, long time. Morning until night, problems. And now you come to me with this utterly ridiculous, this, this, this totally absurd kind. Is the woman mad? Well, no, no. She's just laboring under the delusion that she paid for a day aboard ship that she never got. Can we be expected to control the sun? Were we supposed to move the international date line for this woman's convenience? She claims that we can control our advertising. We sold her a 90-day trip around the world. Oh, that package tour. More headaches. I'm almost of a mind to cancel the blasted thing. Wash it up. Forget it. 
They want to see the pyramids, let them bargain for their own camels. It's the gondola arrangements in Venice that give us the most trouble, sir. Those gondoliers are forever. All right, all right. right. You're about this Miss Prime. Prime, sir. Hmm? Oh, yes, Prime. Uh, she wouldn't have a leg to stand on in court. Still, uh, let's avoid trouble and have her come in. I will straighten her out. I'm sure you will, sir. Uh, Mr. Morley will see you, Miss Prime. Thank you. Will you really leave us, Mr. Randall? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, won't you sit down, Miss Prime? Thank you. Uh, well, now, Miss Prime, yours seems to be uh, somewhat... Um, Amusing problem. It doesn't amuse me, Mr. Morley. <laughs> I'm inclined to think it will when I explain to you just where the day you think you lost actually went. You mean now? Why, yeah, I, I think so. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, to begin with, when you travel toward the east, you anticipate the sun, as they say in the geography books. Now, if you travel west, you don't anticipate it. On the contrary, you are behind the sun, so to speak. Now, you, Miss Prime, uh, you were traveling from west to east, and so as you passed through each time zone, you uh, lost an hour. I lost a day. Yes, but you lost it hour by hour. Does it matter how I lost it, Mr. Morley? All I know is that I woke up one morning thinking it was Sunday and it turned out to be Monday. Yes. Yeah, well, I must admit it's a bit confusing when you try to pin it down. It's not confusing to me. Uh -huh. I paid for 90 days and I actually received 89. Now, as I told you on Mr. Randolph, I didn't mind not finding romance. What? But... You didn't mind not finding romance? Well, to be truthful, I did mind. But as I also told Mr. Randolph, I couldn't expect you to guarantee that. Even though you do make quite a point of it in your folder. We do? On the package tour? Well, you... You, you suggest it, anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Prime. If anything we say in our folder aroused uh, the expectations which were left uh, unfulfilled. Oh, dear me, you're not to blame. You're really not. I'm just not the romantic type. Nonsense. No, I mean it. I seem totally incapable of, well, shall we say, playing the game. The game? Well, yes. I mean, well, for instance, every woman knows that every man likes to be flattered. Oh? <laughs> and I am one of those women who seem to labor under a compulsion to call a spade a spade. Oh. A man likes a woman to be an interested listener. Uh, I love to talk. Uh, Take your mustache. I beg your pardon? Your mustache. Now, I'll bet a cookie you're very proud of it. Well, I... And you have every right to be, I'm sure. It's Well, it really is most attractive, and I can see that you take pains with it. Yes, 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 I do, but uh, quite what that is... The first thing I noticed when I came in was the fact that it makes you look ten years older. Now, if you and I were to meet on shipboard, let's say, and you were to invite me to, well, let's say, have a cocktail with you, I would say, to myself, not you, I would say, Susan, be smart. Now, play the game. Tell him how attractive his mustache is and forget, forget, Susan, that it makes him look ten years older. But you tell me it makes me look older. A spade is a spade. And that's what you call it? Yes. I lack discretion. Mm -hmm. And, oh, well, every woman knows dozens of ways of appealing to a man, and, and so do I, but I... Now, there you see. Here I am. I'm chattering away. I'm wasting your time. Oh, no, 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 no. I find talking to you a pleasure. You possess, if I may say so, Miss Prime, a refreshing honesty. Well, 
Well, thank you. Well, you were the first man who's ever said that to me. You're one of the few women I've ever met to whom I could say it. You know, you know, in a way, we have a good deal in common. Perhaps that's why I never found what you call romance, either. You? I'm 50 years old, Miss Prime, and still a bachelor. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, I think you do. <laughs> well, we have wandered from the point, haven't we? Uh, haven't we, though? It's too bad if you ask me that I couldn't have been on that cruise. I think you and I would have gotten along fine. Uh, yes. Um, well, uh, to get back to our little problem, uh, what would you like us to do to to make it up to you? Hmm? What? Miss Bryant? Are you crying? Oh, no. No, of course not. I don't want you to do anything, Mr. Morley. Nothing? I, I was wrong. I don't understand. Neither did I till now. I, I guess... I guess it was just being able to talk to someone about things. You mean not finding romance where and when you expected to find it? I don't know. It's all mixed up. All I know is I'll be going back to Washington's Ford, Pennsylvania, and in another month my half-term sabbatical will be over, and I'll be teaching school again and going home at night and... Wanting to cook something wonderful, but there'll be no one to cook for, so there'll be no point. Or well, thinking it might be nice to go to a movie, only you don't want to go alone. And you're sick of reading. And you're sick of listening to records. And you're sick of the thought that that's all there is, so ever will be for you. I know now that that's why that day, that single unimportant day, seems so terribly important. It wasn't just one day out of my life. It was one day out of a separate lifetime of 90 golden days. Well, that was quite a speech, wasn't it? I've hardly met you, and I confide in you as if you were an old, old friend. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's always good to get things out of your system. You may be right about what you say, but I, I, I feel we owe you something. I'll have a check made out for $25. Oh, no, no, please. Yes, please yes, don't. yes, yes. I'll I... have it sent to your hotel. Please. Uh, where are you staying, Miss Prine? Uh, the, the Luxembourg, but... The Luxembourg. Miss Prine, I... I don't mean to be presumptuous, but... No, 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 don't think that. I... I wonder... Yes? Suppose I brought the check to you in person. Oh, no. Really, Mr. Morley, you, you, you must be a very busy man with so many things to occupy you when you leave here. And... I have nothing to occupy me when I leave here, Miss Bryan. You see, I got sick of reading, too, a long time ago. So I'd be more than happy to bring the check to your hotel. If you don't mind, that is. I would be delighted. Uh, in fact, if you're not doing anything, anything special, and uh, you could join me for dinner... I, I'm, I'm not doing anything special. Well, then, shall we say the Luxembourg at seven? I... Are you quite sure... I am very sure. Well, at seven, then. Oh, Vera Sane, Mr. Morley. Oh, Vera Sane, Miss Prime. Well, Mr. Morley, leave it to you. <laughs> You not only calmed her down, you made her look positively radiant. Uh, did you hear me, Mr. Morley? Huh? Oh. 
Randolph. Sir? Does my mustache make me look ten years older than I am? Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Floyd speaking.